hope you're all having a good day so far. Thank you for coming. My name is Ryan Bartley, and I'm very proud to present Cinder Ignite, a game engine built on the creative coding framework Cinder. Let me give you a little history before I tell you why I built a game engine. When I was a child, I loved games. <laughs> so much so that when I finished one, I'd find my mom wherever she was doing whatever she was doing and get her to drop everything to document what I thought to be my wonderful progress. However, I didn't go into game development because of these two films in 1994. My mom wouldn't let me see them, but in fact, they changed the trajectory of my life forever. I'd never seen films like these before. I wanted to affect people the way these films had affected me. So I went to film school. I became a filmmaker, often filling multiple roles of a production, but this became the viewport I'd know and love, Final Cut Pro. This is where I spent tireless hours taking tiny pieces of stories and trying out different ways of putting them together. But after a few years, this wasn't enough. I wanted more, so I came to ITP. Within the first three weeks, I fell in love with programming, making a Pac-Man-like game to help with the transition to code. Rebuilding the essence of this game made learning object orientation easy. After that, I was hooked. And this became my viewport. The similarities did not escape me. <laughs> Differences aside, they were both used for experience creation. I could see that objects and programming were like tiny strips of film. Putting them in the right combination would create something that I was proud of, an experience, whereas the wrong combination would lead to hours of debugging and eventually tears. <laughs> when I realized that maybe I could express this similarity to other people not familiar with code, I decided to create a class at ITP because you can just do that here. The class was interactive 3D programming, and I taught my friends who also didn't come from coding backgrounds how to use it from a creative standpoint. Here's a game two friends, Sam Brenner and Mike Allison, created for the class called Bad Fighter, a co-op style fighting game in the browser. It's pretty hilarious. You should definitely check it out. <laughs> also around this time, I fell in love with the open source movement. No one should have to pay for knowledge, especially code knowledge. Most people who know me know that I love code. But equally, I love open source. I want everyone to know how to code, but even more than that, I want them to enjoy it like I do. Unfortunately, two years goes very fast, and before I knew it, I had to pick a thesis. After some turmoil, I chose to make a game, but I'd like to get to the game uh, in just a second, because after I decided that I wanted to make a game, one of the first questions I had was, how? Especially when I knew I wanted my game to be filmic, filled with scenes of dialogue, animation, songs, and a dynamic world that could last for a full 10 days. And I'll get back to that later as well. What was available for this type of game in the open source community? I spent a lot of time looking at other frameworks to create my game. But like Goldilocks, nothing fit quite right. They were either too high level, too low level, closed source, profit shares, and I felt I'd have to buy into the way they created games in walks Cinder, and the idea to create Ignite on top of it. I've worked for Cinder for the past year on the core of the code, and though it wasn't a game framework, it had many of the pieces I'd need, and I knew as I built it, I could teach it to people, and at the same time, create it with my game in mind. For the rest of the semester, I went about creating each subsystem that I needed. Now I'd like to show you a few of the features. I developed Ignite from the perspective of creating something easy to use for fast iteration, uh, but with a backbone that could be expanded to support lower level uh, capabilities and implementations. The first challenge was to make it easy to start. All you have to do is download it and execute build dot <laughs> That will download, build, and install Cinder with all the tools necessary. Once everything is downloaded, you can open Tinderbox um, and create an Ignite basic template. Those three steps, and we're basically on our way. Now, <laughs> what's in the template? Let's take a look. It's fairly simple. It contains a scene, a sphere, and a plane. Let's see what a, a, it looks like when we compile. Not very good. Let's see if we can add some life uh, to this scene with the light. We'll give the light a position, an ambient color, an intensity, a diffuse, 
and a specular color. Now, you don't have to do this each time, but these are options are available. Let's see what happens. It looks a little bit better, <clears throat> but not great. Let's add a shadow by enabling it in three lines of code. That's much better. So now that we have some realism, let's add another object. Ignite provides all known primitives like cubes, spheres, cones, etc., and it can import objects from other 3D programs like Blender. And like the light, we'll give it a position and a color, and, but we'll also give it a mass of zero, making it a static object. Let's see what that does. So as you can see, the object doesn't move whenever the uh, ball hits it. Now we're a bit more dynamic, but let's get a little deeper. Let's add some collision detection. We'll put out to the console, we'll put out to the console when collisions have begun and when they end. However, let's see what other info we can get when we register a collision. By giving the sphere a name like sphere, we can retrieve it in the collision function because the, the sphere collides with something. Now we see Body Zero's name is Sphere. Our scene is more dynamic, but what we need now is sound. Just like physics, Ignite comes fully equipped with an audio manager. All we have to do is load an FX from a file, and then we could just play those effects, and our manager takes care of the rest. Although it still feels wrong. We'll make it a bit more dynamic by giving the sphere some bounce. That's better, but let's put the sound into a more three-dimensional space. The audio manager also comes equipped with a 3D mixer to make the effects feel like they're more in the space of our world. We'll add some more spheres to fill out the space. And the Stereo is not coming along, but you can imagine that uh, it sounds really amazing. <laughs> uh, so things are going pretty well. And with about 12 lines of C++, we have a pretty dynamic scene uh, right out of the box. Uh, that's Cinder Ignite in a nutshell, but there's much more under the hood that I don't have time to get into. So to help me create the framework, I started building a small game. Like Pac-Man, I chose to rebuild an old NES game. Arkanoid, but update it in 3D space. If you don't know what Arkanoid is, let me show you. I picked this game because it's simple, but provides a lot of game mechanics to test, like multiple levels, different types of objects, and also it was one of my favorite games as a child. Let me show you what I created with Ignite. Do I need to put it over here? Is it over here? OK, there we go. I'll try to... Um, so, you know, this actually... Uh, <laughs> I built in a bumper so that I would not lose. <laughs> I figured something like that would happen. But that doesn't really feel like uh, the way to play Arkanoid these days. So to show you one other w thing that uh, Cinder Ignite comes with is, let's go ahead and lower down the exposure a little bit. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Um, full implementation of iOS. So now you can kind of, well, now it's totally out of focus. How do I focus it? OK, yeah. So, but basically, you get the idea. Everything that you make, <laughs> everything that you make on the desktop will easily and automatically be able to be ported to the iOS. Um, so let's get back to the. So what are my next steps? Building the Arkanoid game showed me a lot of holes in my design. So my first steps are to optimize, optimize, optimize. My goal was to make uh, Arkanoid in 33 lines of code, totally arbitrary. I don't even know why I picked that number, but. Uh, it ended up being around 124. So I, st I want to make it better. I want to make it easier. Um, uh, I really want to make this en engine intuitive and great to give people, myself especially, a tool for easy creation. 
Also, and at the same time, I'll be making tutorials for the use of this code. I plan on building out all 33 levels of Arkanoid and releasing it not only on the App Store uh, for free, but also I want to release all of the source code with the engine. I learned so much from source code and I want to give everything back. Um, and finally, I plan to create. I bet it was weird when I said I decided to make a game and then didn't explain it. Well, I wanted to save the best for last. The game I want to make is saying goodbye. A game where you, as the main character, face the decisions a person would have to make knowing they were going to die in 10 days. It's a game that deals realistically with my own personal fears. You, as the player, spend 10 days in real life choosing to be a part of the character's life or not, controlling the character through interactions like, for instance, saying goodbye to their mother. How do you say goodbye to a loved one? This conflict is at the heart of saying goodbye and the reason for building out Cinder Ignite. I want people to feel the game is a mirror of their own lives. And at the same time, I want to make it correctly as it's very personally important to me. Because in essence, we're all heading towards our inevitable game over. <laughs> so that's what I'll be up to for the next couple of years. <laughs> Thank you, and I love you. Um, I don't know if I have any time left. So, uh, oh, yeah, maybe I do. Um, if you have any questions, I can answer those now. <coughs> yep. Um, so getting a bit technical, uh -huh. <laughs> what do you think your greatest understanding for making a game engine was? Well, I didn't know how to make games, like to be totally honest. And whenever I was looking at frameworks, um, I kind of got really afraid that I'd be able to use this thing really well, but not be able to translate it to other things. So I felt like the best thing I could do was just kind of create uh, a game engine to learn how to make games. Uh, and then I could translate that to anything. Yeah. What kind of levels did the uh, go through in the game? Like you said, the um, well, so it's, it's, a, it's a free world kind of exploration game that um, there aren't really levels. You just literally get, from the beginning of the game, you are told that you're going to die in 10 days. Like, that's the character's uh, beginning scene. And you uh, have those 10 days in real life to kind of come to terms with that yourself. Um, and so the, the levels would be kind of like, you know, family and friends saying goodbye to them. Um, there's something built in where you can kind of uh, be escapist about it, um, where you can just choose to like forego experiences with your family and friends. Um, yeah, it's kind of complicated. I, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, and also, you know, the game, building the game engine has allowed me some kind of time to reflect on, like, what I want the story to be. Um, uh, somehow, while I code, I, I can just think about other things, so it's easier to just code and think about the story as I do. Yep. Top three favorite kill scenes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, probably, oh God, you put me on the spot. I love them all. <laughs> uh, what was it? I really like that, uh, I love Spy Hunter. Um, I love Arkanoid's explosion. That's one of the first things I'm gonna do right after I'm done with this, because getting that explosion in 3D space I think will be a great uh, tool for later particle systems. Um, I loved Mortal Kombat. All of those kill scenes were pretty amazing for me as a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>